yeah, I th thought I'm a farmer's boy from Jotland, and I thought perhaps I could be a farmer, then perhaps I could be a teacher, and then uh -huh, at high school, oh, I started to be interested. I saw some interesting stones and nature at the beach, and uh, I got interested in ah, those stones were brought by ice from Norway, and that was quite uh, interesting. So my interest in geology started uh, in, in the high school. But uh, then I had two years in the army at, uh, at the uh, Royal Garden in Copenhagen, where I had some time to think. And uh, I remember that I had some ideas of doing engineering, or perhaps quite something different. Engineering, or ge geology, geophysics, or perhaps even social sciences with politics. And just as a coincidence, I have two brothers. brothers. One is an engineer and the other did social sciences. <laughs> but I'm very happy, I'm very happy that I decided geology and geophysics uh, because this uh, has been so fascinating for, for me. And then heat flow came later. Heat flow and heat flow studies came later. And that was more or less a coincidence. I was so happy. I did gravity and isostasy in my master. But then we had a guest professor, guest professor David Malmquist from Sweden, and he did some temperature and heat flow measurements in Sweden, and he brought this interest to Aarhus. So when he left, he was there only for about one year. He was quite, he was on more or less on pension. So my professor said, aha, this is a new area. You did gravity and isostasy, but quite a number of people do gravity and isostasy. But temperature measurements and heat flow, we have no one in Denmark doing this. This could be something for you. And I'm so happy that I was uh, guided into this because of my professor, Sven Svaxer, because of this uh, guest professor uh, from Sweden. Uh, we built some, or they built for him some uh, equipment. So this is where I started to, I moved into to this. Uh One thing that was in the mid 70s, where we had the uh, so-called oil crisis. Now it's a uh, global warming, but at that time it was the uh, oil crisis. Hydrocarbons went up in price. So there was an interest in, uh, in uh, uh, alternative uh, energies. I visited the, the Mask uh, AP Muller uh, holding company doing uh, drillings for hydrocarbons. Everything was basically confidential. But when I came into this, I think his name was Talbaka or something. When I came into his office and he saw this young guy uh, interested in his topic, he was telling about, yeah, we drilled down to this reservoir that was now called the gas information. We drilled down to this reservoir, but we find no oil, but, but uh, there's sufficient porosity. And so uh, if you, I think we can produce a lot of water, but we do not do this. We need to pay the rig time and everything. 200,000 corn, I think it was. For some reason, I just mentioned to a newspaper that I needed 200,000 corner to do a very interesting test to see if we may have geothermal resources in Denmark. But then there was a phone call from a district heating company said, I see the newspaper that you need 200,000 corner to do an interesting test. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, 200,000, this is quite something, but we may have 100,000. And then I managed over uh, some time to have two, 200,000, 400,000 already at the beginning, and the rest from the Minister of, uh, uh, Minister of Energy, it's called today. And I still remember it was a very ni nice night and uh, evening, very clear sky, and everything was there ready, and Halliburton came, and we uh, had the pack as we shot the holes in the casing, and that was the gas, unfortunately it was a gas reservoir, 2,000 two, two meters, and they produced a lot of water, 70 degrees, and they told me already at the site that this looks very good, looks very good. So I wrote a report, and I became the, the, the person uh, inventing warm water <laughs> in the, from the Danish uh, subsurface. So that gave me really a kick into this uh, geothermal energy. So I think this first reservoir test being associated with the EU geothermal energy program with a lot of money. And in this energy program also in Europe, then at that time, I met I met Vladimir Tiamak, I met uh, Lassie Rebak, 
I, I, I came into this International Heat Flow Commission and met uh, Henry Pollack and Dave Chapman from the U.S. So as a as a young, quite uh, rather young person, coming quickly into this, uh, that was really fascinating because those were the, the top the top scientists in heat flow at that time. And I was asked to uh, to write uh, for Denmark a uh, uh, the Danish contribution to the uh, to the European heat flow map, and I thought, oh 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 my God! Now I need to have some data, so I really was in a hurry to produce something. I met I met uh, uh, Ron Oxborough from uh, from Cambridge. He was doing. He had a, a, a very very good group doing heat flow in the UK. So, uh, so we had some discussions, and since I didn't have a permanent position, I was running on soft money more or less uh, in Denmark. Uh, I thought that aha, uh -huh, Cambridge. This is not the. This is this may be a good place to visit. So if you can, uh, if you can, if you have been at uh, at Cambridge, uh, then you may have a chance, better chance to to move back home uh, for a position. So I spent about one year at uh, Cambridge with uh, with Ron Oxborough, and then finally I got my permanent position. I think it was 1983 at Aarhus. So after these uh, the different steps, so. Uh, Hard work, hard work, the publications and uh, and funding. But don't forget, don't forget about the rest. Personally, I have a hobby which is uh, racing uh, horses, and I'm so happy that I had this still being somewhere here, a farmer's boy. So even if I did uh, a lot of science, always I love to come back to this uh, farm of my uh, father, which I uh, was so happy to to be able to to continue. Well, the the, uh, the geothermal studies brought me to uh, to Greenland, to the Faroe Islands, to Sweden, to Norway. Well, in addition to Denmark, with a lot of of uh, measurements. So um, Greenland was really fascinating uh, to me, but that was mostly from uh, the point of nature uh, point of nature. So I could mention Greenland because this is really a fascinating area. But in terms of science, I still remember when I was standing in Sweden, a borehole drilled to seven kilometers. I have the opportunity to lock the deepest borehole now in Scandinavia. And I think, because there were shallow boreholes in the same area, I think now we have the possibility to have some very good data for paleoclimate. So finally, we try. We will have some data where we can see both the heat flow at shallow depths, intermediate, at great depths. So I think that was a very special moment, standing at this platform, looking at this uh, top part of the borehole. I knew that it was at least five kilometers uh, deep uh, for available for measurements. It was drilled into seven kilometers where we had a bottom hole temperature. That was a very special moment. That was a very special moment. It has been really so fascinating to combine uh, field work and to combine experiments with theory. Um, and also it has been really uh, inspiring for me to have uh, on one side, just for curiosity, to understand the subsurface, the processes, the flow of heat, the flow of heat as a boundary condition for doing calculation, but also also the applied side in terms of geothermal energy and also the applied side in, in terms of seeing uh, global warming in the in, in the boreholes not just as something which is disturbing our signal but uh, but also as a, a signal to understand what was the past temperatures uh, long-term paleoclimate and now we see the recent warming uh, so, uh, for young scientists, uh, I would uh, say that uh, combining your cu curiosity with the fundamentals, but if you can also see some something which can uh, which can be uh, of help to society, that was has been really a driving thing for me. Clearly, already from the very beginning. I was aware that geothermal energy would be a green technology. 
I was uh, engaged with a group which would uh, build uh, new buildings uh, based on solar and wind energy. And, uh, and so I had this interest. I actually, together with my two brothers, I bought also a wind uh, turbine, so producing green energy. So, so that part was, uh, perhaps this was the, the combination of the engineering interest with the social sciences, <laughs> which I had already from, from the very beginning. So I was very much aware of, uh, also because I, I started during this 68 uh, generation, which was some, um, uh, well, yeah new ideas. And I wrote also about geothermal energy in, uh, for a, a society which was against, uh, against nuclear power. That was uh, nuclear power, the, the, the grassroots uh, asking me to do a report on, on geothermal energy. I was very happy about that, I remember. remember. I think definitely that and I hope that care will be taken on our planet Earth in terms of global warming. So I hope very much that the carbon dioxide curve has been really changed to increase, to go down close to zero. And I hope very much, and also I think that this will be giving so much priority that within the geosciences, Earth renewable energy sources will be giving priority and this may change also the directions of research. We know that uh, bi biodiversity is something uh, on the agenda in biology. I think this, uh, this sustainability in terms of resources and uh, in terms of energy, not, not only geothermal energy, but also solar and wind, I think this will have an, a significant effect on the, uh, on the geosciences. Oh, I can show this interview to my, my son's background and say that uh, your father is taking care of your future.